Uh, thanks for coming along and we appreciate your time this morning. Uh, so today, this evening, um, 8 o'clock, Fianna Fáil will be bringing forward a private member's uh, motion in the Dáil and we'll also be bringing forward a private member's motion in the Shannon as well uh, to outline the need for a much more credible and urgent response from the Minister for Agriculture and the Government in relation to the fodder crisis. Uh, farmers across the country are in a very difficult situation. Uh, fodder has run out, there is no end in sight to the bad weather. Uh, growth has been very much behind. As a result of that, uh, farmers are under immense financial pressure, but they're also under a lot of mental strain, and also we have animal welfare issues as a result of the fact that fodder is very scarce in the country. Unfortunately, the government has been caught totally cold in relation to the response on this issue. The Minister for Agriculture, Michael Creed, spent most of the winter denying that there was any problem with a fodder shortage in the country, despite the fact that uh, Fianna Fáil and farming organisations were warning him on several occasions that he needed to be prepared and needed to acknowledge the fact that there was a difficulty. He, he, the, belatedly, he introduced a fodder import subsidy, but he still has not responded to the very real need for support for farmers at farm level. In particular, we need to see a hardship scheme put in place for the many farmers who actually are finding it difficult to get by as a result of the, as a result of the financial strain that they're under, uh, under at the moment. Fianna Fáil for a number of months now have been calling for a meal voucher scheme in order to assist those farmers who need support in relation to making the fodder that they have stretch. And the other thing we need to see is that given the fact that this is the second year in five where there's been a fodder crisis, we need to ensure that this is the last time that the government are unprepared for this and that we, we, we end up in a situation where fodder has to be imported into the country. And we need to see a system and a structure put in place through a standing committee to actually monitor fodder supplies in the country and ensure that the government is prepared to actually provide the leadership required in relation to actually responding to that if such a, such a situation arises again. So I might ask some of my colleagues uh, to come in and, and maybe add to that as well. Uh, low, low cost interest loan for farmers is essential at the moment and at the Giant Rockless Committee on Wednesday uh, Minister Creed said you know the banks would look after this and you know he was washing his hands of the issue. In, the, in 2016 when, when the budget um, measures gave low cost finance to farmers, those who needed most wasn't able to get access to the credit that they needed. He just can't leave this to the banks to look after. He has to have a hands on approach himself, the Minister, and the Department has to ensure that those who need the credit get it. And as, as, as Deputy McConnell Oak has said, mm. farmers are under huge mental pressure out there at the moment. And at least if they had the means to pay their merchant credit, it would take some of that mental pressure off their shoulders. And of course, right across the country, and particularly, of course, in the constituency of Cavan, and we do see farmers under huge emotional and financial stress, which of course has repercussions for their entire families. Uh, we have had farmers noted that you know another three or four weeks are going to be in really, really tough territory, and the government have sat on their hands. My colleague here, Deputy Charlie McConnell, has had many motions down at this stage, and we've spoken on many times in the thought, and there's been complete denial on the government side that there is a problem here. Uh, I think a major problem at the moment also is that. People are beginning to see a light at the end of the tunnel with good forecasts for the coming weeks. But this is actually the beginning of the fodder crisis 2019, if it's not managed correctly going forward. As Deputy Cahill has said, a lot of farmers have used up all their credit with their merchants in buying extra feed and fodder that they didn't have planned buying. Now they're not going to be in a position to buy fertiliser, etc., to rebuild up the stocks that have been used up during the crisis. So, as I say, if it's not managed correctly and we don't sail smoothly out of this, crisis 2018, we will actually be setting straight into crisis 2019. Mm -hmm. I suppose on the dairy side, I suppose one of the knock-on effects is that production is down and constituents of milk is, is significantly down as well. So cash flow situation is being badly affected as well. The farmers are getting a significantly lower price for their product than what they would have expected to get in a normal spring. Might take some questions now. Office of Emergency Planning equivalent for agriculture. Is that no, I, I, what, what we have in mind is a, a committee where all of the stakeholders would be involved. So the professional organisations, the advisory organisations, very importantly the farmer representative organisations, and then Department of Agriculture representatives as well. Because unfortunately, what we've had over the last number of months, and Fianna Fáil jointly, a number of my colleagues here and myself, uh, there's about a dozen Fianna Fáil TDs raised a topical issue on this in the Dáil at the start of November calling for the Minister to actually recognise the crisis that was coming down the tracks. 
But the government and the minister in particular were in denial at all stages that there was a crisis. They denied it and said there wasn't going to be one. And yet we find ourselves standing here with, a, with farmers across the country in tremendous difficulty and under tr tremendous stress at the moment. So that needs to be avoided again. And we need a situation where in future the government actually do listen to the warnings. And I think it would be if we had a standing committee in place where the government formally had to engage and listen to the voices in this farming sector, we could ensure that, that those are recognised and listened to in the future and that the government is prepared and we don't have the situation where their lack of leadership uh, on the issue has exacerbated the crisis. Charlie, could you give us some more details on the meal voucher scheme that you're also suggesting? And secondly, I suppose, what would you say to those who say that you know, farmers are the only cohort in Ireland who you know, self-employed small businesses who would never expect to get this amount of funding from the government and yet farmers want more? Well, I think, first of all, in your, your second point, Elaine, I think uh, re regardless of the type of business involved, uh, the public expect ministers to show leadership and to be on top of the issue and to do their best to assist uh, businesses of all, of all uh, descriptions actually meet challenges facing them. Unfortunately, the government in relation to agriculture and the fodder crisis in this, in this instance has totally failed to do that. It's even more important from a, an agriculture point of view because of the fact that we have the common agricultural policy um, and payments to farmers for the production of very high quality food at a cost that actually then means consumers in the shops don't pay uh, as much as they otherwise would. So because of that structure in, in the farming community, it's, it's even more important that the Minister for Agriculture is on top of the issues and is available to support the farming sector when there is a crisis. And that's why it's particularly important that we see this in this instance. In relation to the meal voucher scheme, um, we have, from the, the, the commencement of the winter, indicated that a meal voucher scheme, if it had been introduced in proper time, could have ensured that fodder supplies that were in the country could have been stretched and made to last longer. The fact that the Minister didn't do that at the time meant that the crisis is much more acute than it, than it, than it should be or that it otherwise would have been. And it's still not too late because farmers at the moment are feeding concentrates and meal. Uh, many of them actually are struggling to afford to do that. And a, a meal voucher system which actually would assist those who need to do that over the next number of weeks, uh, the next two or three weeks would be very important and we believe the Minister should still do that. And the farming organisations as well consistently from the outset have been calling for that approach to be taken. And your costings on that scheme? Uh, well, we're talk one and a half million at the moment has been allocated towards the import of uh, fodder uh, from abroad. We believe that, first of all, shouldn't be capped. But we believe a similar figure would actually make a massive difference to those farmers who are struggling and uh, in hardship. Uh, as Deputy Cahill outlined, uh, a low interest loan scheme would also be of, uh, of great assistance to the vast majority in the farming community who are under immense financial pressure at the moment. But for many, uh, a meal voucher scheme is going to be important because they're actually struggling at the moment uh, to ensure that the, the, that animals are fed and to meet the, the, the financial uh, repercussions of the crisis they find themselves in. Can I ask you, in terms of the, the hardship fund for small to medium-sized farmers, what's the cap, what, what, would, what would you describe a medium-sized farmer as? What acreage? And secondly, what's the cost you for all of this? And also for the permanent compensation scheme for first weather, No, it shouldn't be. I mean, there, there is potential within the Rural Development Programme under, under CAP at the moment to have uh, an adverse weather compensation scheme. Um, the, the Irish government chose not to put such a, a mechanism in place and it would use up some of the overall CAP envelope. Um, but given the fact that we have seen so many adverse weather uh, events in the last four or five years, I think it's shown the, uh, the, the lack of foresight um, of the government actually to, in not recognising that we need such a fund because there does be times where the government needs to step in and provide funding to support the farming community such as such as we see now, uh, such as we saw last year with the tillage, uh, the tillage crisis and indeed in instances such as the severe flooding in Donegal. And the first two questions, the cost? The cost, we, we believe that one and a half million would go a long way in relation to meeting the uh, requirements that are there at the moment but uh, it's, it's not significant, but it's a very acute, immediate problem for, for, for a period of a couple of weeks. So if it takes more than that, then, then so be it. But we do believe that that would, that, would, that would cover it. And the capacity is there in the Department of Agriculture to actually meet that. We've seen um, each of the last number of years for the Department have underspent last year to the tune of uh, just under 80 million. The year before that, it was 46 million of underspent. So the, the Department had the capacity to, to carry that. Well, 
it, again, that, that would depend who you're talking to, but um, I, I would make the what point. Kind of you're in. I, I would make this point. <laughs> uh, I would make I would make this point in relation to beef uh, farming. Your average farm income is thirteen thousand euro last year. For sheep, for the sheep sector, the average farm income was fifteen thousand euro uh, last year. Uh, the 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 principle we would outline is that. Uh, it should be the individual circumstances of the farmer and the type of hardship they're experiencing which should be considered and we need a mixture of, uh, of, of low interest loans um, to meet a lot of uh, medium to larger size farms and also for those who have a lower income and not necessarily the same ability to repay loans we need the hardship option to be available. So that's one and a half million on top of the one and a half million that Mr. Reed is That's correct, yes, yes. No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't agree. I think um, we have seen tremendous growth uh, in the agri-food sector, um, and I think the the foodwise targets um, should should continue to be in place. Um, however, I mean, I, I think the government and the agri-food sector need to be better prepared for uh, adverse weather uh, situations. And um, I think with the proper planning, we shouldn't see this type of event happening again. Um, but overall, uh, agri-food is the largest sector of our indigenous economy. Um, we have seen it grow from 7 billion um, in exports to over 12 billion in exports in the, la in the last six years. And there's further potential there. But um, it's important that there is capacity in the system to deal with particular crises. And we think that if the government actually are responsive um, we shouldn't see the type of scenario that we've unfortunately experienced where the government have totally failed to be prepared and left the farming sector without leadership as a, uh, in a, in a, at a very difficult time. Charlie, obviously this crisis has come at a significant cost to merchants, farmers and, and suppliers. Is it inevitable in that consumers want to get in the pocket of the government in action here and their ability to deal with the crisis or manage it as, as you see fit? Uh, no, I don't think this will end up uh, impacting on consumer prices. Unfortunately, uh, what we have found is because of the position of the primary producer and the farmer in the food chain that the farmer always takes the pain in relation to um, adverse and crisis conditions and drops in price. Uh, other sectors in the, in the food chain maintain their margins and it gets dropped down and ultimately the farmers are squeezed. So that's why it's important that there is support for the farming community at the moment and that's why it's also uh, important and Fianna Fáil are prioritising trying to address the, uh, the position of the primary, uh, the primary producer in the food chain. We have a bill uh, which we're bringing forward, which we've brought forward in the Dáil and also we're very supportive of, of moves at European level to try and improve the position of the primary producer and the protections that are there for the primary producer. Charlie, given the, the, the bad winter that we were after experiencing and spring and the fodder stocks are severely deteriorated across the country, if we get a bad August, we're looking at a very serious situation running into the next winter. How do you think the, the department can combat that and what would you be looking for Mr. Preed to put in place that if we do get a bad winter, where we will go to get fodder? Well, I think the farming community will, will respond um, coming into this year. Uh, they will understand that fodder supplies are depleted and I think there will be an effort made to try and ensure that fodder is, is extra fodder is safe to make up for that. Um, we've come off a very difficult, uh, very difficult year um, and uh, farmers will very much be hoping for better growth. Um, and uh, a better year but I think uh, with the warning that's in place farmers will cut their cloth to measure as the year progresses and will be prioritising ensuring that there's adequate fodder uh, in place for the following the, for, the, for the following winter OK, thanks everybody Great, thanks, thanks very much everyone Appreciate that Thank you.